Okay, so here is our example of disjunction elimination. Say, here we are, got my scope line, and the pieces, the premises that I'm given are A or O, that's an assumption, if A, then F, that's another assumption, and if O, then F, that's our third assumption. And the conclusion we want to get to is F. Okay, so that's what you're given. You're given your premises and your conclusion. How would we go about proving this? Well, we look down here and we say, okay, we want an F, but how are we going to get it? We look up there and go, ooh, there's an F, but it's sort of attached to an O. So maybe if I had an O first, then I could get the F using conditional elimination. So we try that. Write ourselves an O down, conditional elimination from line three, and now we have to worry about getting an O. Okay, where would we have gotten the O? We look up there at line one, we go, oh look, there's an O, we can get that one. And then we realize, wait a minute, it's connected to the A with a disjunction. So we don't know which one of those is true. We can't be sure if O is true, because it only says A or O. It doesn't tell us if A is the one that's true or if O is the one that's true. So we're stuck. We kind of reached the end of the road on that one. So we say, well, maybe we can get the F a different way without ending up there. So we say, well, we tried getting F from the O. That didn't work so well. So, hey, look, there's F, and it's attached to an A. Maybe if we had an A first, then we could use conditional elimination to get rid of that and get it to the A. All right. So where are we going to get an A? Oh, look, there it is, line one, there's an A, but it's attached with a disjunction to the O. So we're not sure if the A is true or if the O is true, so we can't just write A down by itself. So at this point, what we realize is that the only way to get F is by getting some piece of information out of that disjunction. So we know we have to use the disjunction elimination rule. And that rule says, over here, we can say, well, we're going to have to get F through disjunction elimination. Okay? So, what we'll need for that, according to our rule, is two subderivations. One, two. And the first one, what we're going to assume is the first piece of the disjunction. We're going to assume A. And the second one, we're going to assume the second piece of the disjunction. And for the conclusion of each of these, we want the conclusion that we're going to get in the very end. So we have to get from A to F, and then we have to get from O to F. All right, so now we can treat each one of those separately. And so let's worry about the bottom one. We want to get to F, and we need to get through it, get to it from an O. So we go, where can we find an F? Oh, there's an F, and it's attached to an O, which is what we needed before. So we say, I know how to get F. We can get it by eliminating that conditional, conditional elimination. And remember, for that rule, what we do is we cite the line where the conditional was, line three, and then we're going to need to cite that O, but we don't have the numbering for that yet. So we'll leave that as it is, and remember the O was an assumption according to the disjunction elimination rule. Then we come up here and we say, I need to get an F out of an A. And we look, oh look, there's an F, and it's attached to an A with a conditional. So we can get that from conditional elimination. And remember, the A here was an assumption. And now it looks like we've gotten all our pieces of information. So we can finish numbering and finish writing out our citations. So that conditional elimination, we have the conditional 
from line two, and then we have the first piece of it from line four. And then here, the F, we had conditional elimination from line three, and then we have the first piece of that on line six. And then finally, to cite, and then finally, we cite the end of it where it says disjunction elimination. We say where we first saw the disjunction, line one, and then we cite the two subderivations that we used, lines four through five, four through five, and line six through seven through seven. And that is the completed proof for an example of disjunction elimination.